Hello, I'm Chris Menard. I have a great video for you today. This video is going to cover starting with just some data that I have on my screen right now. And we're going to create a pivot table together. The file that I'm using will be available to you if you want to follow along. If you already know how to set up your data correctly and want to skip the first part of this video, I have put chapters down below in the video. But the finished product, just to show you right now, before we actually walk through it, is going to look like this. It's a pivot table with all the car manufacturers listed in column A. Then below it are the months, January through December. And what I did in the pivot table is I have subtotals turned on, totaling up, Acura, then each month listed. But then we get advanced by doing running totals for each month. And then I'm also going to show you how to show the change from the previous month. And we'll do some formatting. So if you went down from one month to the next, it shows as a negative number. So let me go ahead and get started first with this start here. Three rules before you even create a pivot table. One, your data needs to be in tabular format. And my data on this spreadsheet is I've got a header row at the top. I've got car, I've got dealerships listed in column A. I've got the car brand, which we're going to use for our pivot table listed here. I've got a rep invoice date. Just so you know this, I ended up doing the invoice date. I have two different years. I've got 2019. And if you scroll down, you'll see that we get into 2020. So I've got two invoice date. I've got invoice dates for two years. I have a total, just so you know this, of 576 records. So it is a lot of data uh, for us to do our sample pivot table. I have a numeric field, invoice amount, and that's the field that I'm going to be using in the pivot table. I also have the year showing, which I'm going to add to the pivot table. And then I've got the month that month is pulling from this invoice date over here. So March shows March, 2019 shows 2019. So we have everything we need to get started. We've got this in tabular format. That's number one. The second item is before you make a pivot table, make sure you don't have any blank columns. That would be really bad right there, column E. And make sure you don't have any blank rows. This would be bad. If you're saying, Chris, is there an easy way to check, especially if you're not the one that set up the data? The answer is yes. Control A while I'm inside my data selects just the range I'm in. It will not select another range. If I had another range over in column K, it would not pick it up. And then Control period will move you to every corner of that range. So I would scroll down here just a little bit and say, okay, there's nothing else there. I've got it all. So control A and then control period. I'm good. Tabular, no blank rows or no blank columns. And number three, I highly recommend before you make a pivot table, you create a table from your range. So this is just data that's in a range right here. So here we go with creating a table. If you're a mouse person, you can go to the Home tab, and here is Format as Table right here. I like to use the keyboard trick, Control in the letter T. So Control T, it wants to take my data and create a table, and it did pick up that I have headers, and that's why it's checked. It picked up the entire range, which is perfect. If you notice up here in the top, uh, in my ribbon, I've got tabs that start with home, got help, view. I don't have one that says table. The table tab is a contextual tab. So when I click OK, now I have a tab up here that says table design. Click outside the table and you don't see it. Click back in the table and you do see it. Couple items about tables before I make the pivot table in case you've never used a table before. In table design, one thing I love, and, I, and one reason I recommend you use tables for your pivot tables, this is optional. I can turn on the total row, and now it shows at the bottom a row that says total. 
it always, because I had text here, it counted it. And I'm going to leave that. But I could quickly come and sum up the invoice amount. I can even change it to average or whatever. But what I love about tables, if I want to add more data, whether the total row is showing or not, I don't care. I can expand the table by pulling it. And let's just see if this works. I'm going to type in the number 1, enter, 2, enter, 3, enter. So there you go. I'm going to undo Control z and I am back here. So I don't care whether the total row is turned on or off. I'm just showing you why I love tables. I'm going to turn that off for now, though. Another feature I love about tables is I can make my pivot table based on this table, but I can change this name because table two is not the best name. I've already created one table. That's why it says table two. By default, it's going to say table one. I'm going to name this. I'm making this up. Uh, auto data because it's automobiles. I recommend no spaces in your table names. I'm going to call it auto data. And I've already made that once. <laughs> so I'm going to call it car data. Uh, that's fun. All right. So we've, we've got a table. We've converted the range to a table. Here we go with the pivot table now. By the way, one cool tip about tables, in your header row, automatically shows up when you scroll. I don't have to go and freeze panes or anything like that. Also get these banded rows and columns. I can change that if I wanted to. There's banded columns, there's banded rows. So let's get started with the pivot table now. Here we go. Insert tab, pivot table. So it says car data, which is correct. I have an option to put it on an existing worksheet or put a new one. I'm going to do a new one. So click OK. I get a new worksheet called Sheet 1. We'll rename this in a second, but let's go ahead and get some fields in here. You can actually check these, but I am going to do a drag and drop because I'm on Microsoft 365 Excel um, on a PC. I do this because somebody may be on the Mac version of Excel, somebody may be on Excel 2010, Excel 2013, so I'm just going to stick with the drag and drop. Brand, I'm just clicking, holding down. I always start off in the row area. I've got four areas down here, and I'm going to let brand go. So there are all my car brands right there. The next one is something numeric. I want that invoice amount. Drag and drop. So these are my header fields right here, by the way. I meant to mention that. This is just my header row from this table. That is all. Okay, so I've got Acura, BMW, Fiat, all this stuff listed here. I want to drag another field. I want to drag in the month. And the question is, where do you want to put it? I'm going to drop it below the brand. Just to show you this before we start doing totals, running totals and all, I could take the month and put it above the brand. I'm still dragging and dropping. So now I would have the months listed before the car manufacturers. I'm going to put it back though the way it is. So I've got brand, I've got month, and by default it is summing up the invoice amount. If by chance it is not summing up the invoice amount, you could click over here to the right, go to Value, Field, Settings, Sum, Count, Average. So if I wanted the average, I would change it to Average. I'm going to stick with Sum right now. Hit OK. If you take a look at row number four, I have Acura and I have what's called a subtotal listed. And it is actually totaling up these numbers right here that I just selected, which by the way, one more time, I like these numbers right here. These numbers that I just selected, if you look down in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, there is the word sum and it's got the exact same number as that subtotal. If you didn't like the subtotals, I'm going to go to the design tab, subtotals, do not show subtotals. 
but I actually do want them. So I'm going to go to subtotals. I could actually put them at the bottom of the group or I could put them at the top. I'm going to actually leave them at the top. So again, if you have a different version of Excel, you can get your screen looking like mine. Now, here comes the cool stuff. I want to know, I've got January's total and Feb and March, but I want to know a running total. So to do the running total, I'm going to take invoice amount again. I'm going to drag it and drop it again. And by default, it says sum of invoice amount too, because I've already got it in here once. That is clearly not what I want. I'm going to stick with my left clicking on the arrow in the bottom right. I'm going to go to the value field settings again. It pulls up value field settings. I've got, an, I've got a tab that says summarize values by. So I could make it average right here, by the way. But what I'm trying to do is to show value as. It always says no calculation. I'm going to hit that arrow. I want to do running totals. So I'm going to just scroll down. Running totals in. Now, I've got to pick something. You want to do running totals, but based on what? It happened to pick the right field, which is month in my example. So if it was on something else, you need to come in and click month. Click OK. Watch this. Oh, I left it as average. Let me fix that too. So <laughs> hey, we're having fun, aren't we? Sum. I want to change it to sum. Oh, that was not what I was expecting. So now you know how to go from average to sum. Anyway, obviously the first month, January, is going to be the exact same amount. So there's the 85 and 85. But February, we made 305,000 and some change. If I take the 85 and the 305, that is the 390. Again, to test it, I'm going to select both of these numbers and look down in the bottom right corner. The sum down there is 390, so there you go. If I, if I highlight all these numbers, you know this, it's got to equal this number, which is the subtotal. Anyway, cool feature, running totals in a pivot table. If you've never used a pivot table, this is a great time to think about how wonderful a pivot table is. So not only did it sum up the brands by each month, because we had multiple orders every month for Acura for January, it even is doing the running total, which would take you forever to manually do this. Here we go again. So now what I want to know is what was the change every month? And so 85,000 to 305, 305 to 149, I want to do the change. Same steps as before almost. Start with dragging the invoice amount down into the values. Again, you know this, sum of invoice amount. Same steps again, click value settings, make sure you're on sum. Show value as, last time I came in here for column C, I did uh, running totals. This time I'm looking for a difference. Difference from. Click it once, there are my fields down below. Again, it happened to pick the right one, which is month. If it didn't, click month. Now, this next one's tricky though. You click month, but it wants more information. What is going to be the base item? Well, I want the difference from the previous month. So I'm going to click previous. There's month. And I'm going to click OK. That is perfect. Because January is the first month, so I should get a blank in cell D5, and I do. Now the next month, I'm going to manually test this out just to make sure it's working. I know it is, but just to see it. I'm going to do equals, that is cell B6 minus cell B5. There you go. The next month I had a decrease. I went from 305K to 149,000. That is a decrease of 156,000 around it. Now, let's talk about formatting these numbers. 
I know a lot of you know how to select the numbers. I'm just going to select this range and hit this comma or hit the dollar sign and do something with the decimals. When you're in a pivot table, the best way to format numbers, and I'll have to do this three times, is just to right click and go to number format. And it's up to you how you want this to look. Currency will have a dollar sign, but I just want to stick with numbers. I don't need any decimals. And I do want a thousand separator. I'm going to hit OK. That should fix everything in column B, even though I only have one cell in B selected. There you go. I'm going to do the same for column C. Right click, number formats, number, zero decimals, use a thousand, hit OK. The reason you want to do it this way is if you go and start adding data on your data worksheet, if you don't do it this way, it sometimes doesn't remember the number format you have if you're using this method up here. So when, in, when you're formatting numbers in a pivot table, do it the way we're doing it now. One more time, but I want to do something special. I want to see the negative numbers in red, a red font. So number formats, number, no decimals, use a thousand. It's up to you. I've got a couple options for my negatives. I've got this one here, and I've got the second one here. I'm going to pick the second one, matter of preference. If you want the fourth one, fine. If you don't want to see them in a red font, pick another one. Hit OK, and there you go. One item I love about pivot tables. If you, th if you think about this, we have not done any formulas. Equals sum, equals average, equals max. We've just made sure our data was correct, made it a table, and made a pivot table, and we're getting all this cool analytics from it. What's also nice about a pivot table is, if you recall back in my data, I've got actually two different years. I've got 2019 and 2020. So if you're saying, Chris, I really would like to see this broken out by year, then by month, Let's do it. Here's year. We've already discussed this. The way you put them down here in the order is the way they're going to show. So I've got brand, and then I've got month, which you can see in column A. I'm going to take the year and just drag and put it in between brand and month and let go. If you make a mistake and drop it in the wrong place, just move it. Just drag and, move, just drag and drop. So now... This is actually all still correct. I'm seeing it by year for 2019. Acura first, 2019, January through December. Then 2020, uh, I didn't have anything in January. went February through November. So, And it's still giving me subtotals for each year and a subtotal, and a subtotal for each brand. So a really cool feature right here. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions at all about this exercise, this file is available on my website. It's also, uh, you can click a link in the YouTube description to get to, my to get to the file. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate your time. Thank you.